The Rural Electrification Act of 1936, enacted on May 20, 1936, provided federal loans for the installation of electrical distribution systems to serve isolated rural areas of the United States. The funding was channeled through cooperative electric power companies, most of which still exist today. These member-owned cooperatives purchased power on a wholesale basis and distributed it using their own network of transmission and distribution lines. The Rural Electrification Act was also an attempt made by FDR's New Deal to deal with high unemployment. History On May 11, 1935, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued Executive Order 7037, which created the Rural Electrification Administration. In 1936, the Congress endorsed Roosevelt's action by passing the Rural Electrification Act. At the time the Rural Electrification Act was passed, electricity was commonplace in cities but largely unavailable in farms, ranches, and other rural places. Representative John E. Rankin and Senator George William Norris were supporters of the Rural Electrification Act, which was signed into law by Roosevelt on May 20, 1936. Speaker of the House Sam Rayburn was a major proponent of the Ray, which he helped pass in 1936 as Chairman of the House Interstate and Foreign Commerce Committee. He proudly stated in 1959 that 90% of farm homes in the U.S. were electrified, compared to 3% in the early 1930s. Technical issues. In the 1930s, the provision of power to remote areas was not thought to be economically feasible. A 2,300-volt distribution system was then used in cities. This relatively low voltage could be carried only about 4 miles before the voltage drop became unacceptable. Ray cooperatives used a 7200 volt distribution network which could support much longer runs up to about 40 miles. Despite requiring more expensive transformers at each home, the overall system cost was manageable. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Wiring homes and farms. Ray crews traveled through the American countryside, bringing teams of electricians along with them. The electricians added wiring to houses and barns to utilize the newly available power provided by the line crews. A standard Ray installation in a house post -World War II consisted of a 60-amp, 230-volt fuse panel, with, a 60-amp range circuit, a 20 amp kitchen circuit, two or three 15 amp lighting circuits, a ceiling mounted light fixture was installed in each room, usually controlled by a single switch mounted near a door. At most, one outlet was installed per room, since plug connected appliances were expensive and uncommon. Wiring was performed using type nanometer non-metallic sheath cable, insulated with asbestos-reinforced rubber covered with jute and tar. Many of these original installations still exist today, though most have been augmented to support a greater number and variety of appliances. <laughs> Later amendments Some amendments to the Rural Electrification Act include 1944 loan terms increased to 35 years, the Act is made permanent 1949 extended the Act to allow loans to telephone companies wishing to extend their connections to unconnected rural areas 1993 provisions to restructure the direct loan programs for rural electricity, telephone cooperatives, and energy conservation market December 8, 1993
North American Free Trade Agreement Implementation Act. The Buy American provision to now include Mexico and Canada. 2008 provisions for access to rural broadband telecommunications network and rural Internet. 2014 pilot program for rural gigabit broadband network. Topic. See also List of utility cooperatives Rural Utilities Service The Great Depression